Welcome back to the Cricket Matters podcast. Today we're talking what is strength and conditioning for cricket. Let's jump straight in. James, how would you define strength and conditioning for cricket? Well, in terms of coaches, it's a fancy title to give them a really important job and make them sound more important than what they really are. How does that sound? Is that a good start? Excellent. You've just insulted all strength and conditioning coaches uh, throughout the world. That was the plan. That was the plan. Because I am one too, okay? And that is important to get across and distinguish. So I, I jest and I joke, but it is such an important part of today's sports, not just cricket, but all crickets in general. However, it isn't considered as important in the UK, I don't think, as other sports. And if you look at the in the States and NFL with college teams and NFL football teams, some of these guys, the head of strength and conditioning is almost at the same pay grade as their head coach. That's how important they consider it in America. Yeah, put that into your stato bag and think about that for a second. Do you think in terms of strength and conditioning, like other sports, I would say like probably like football, professional football are very much catching up maybe not quite but they're there or thereabouts they've got a hell of a lot of sports science do you think they are still a little bit behind in cricket they sort of don't place the emphasis on it that should be placed on it about how important it is uh yes and no i i don't i don't want to do a disservice to all the snc guys working out in cricket out there i think that's a bit unfair but i think it's still at a very early stage and also if you took about look at professional football let's again let's compare the nfl and the head strength and condition coaches out there to the Premier League teams over here, where it's it's almost similar in, in terms of wage bills for players and head coaches. But if you look at the average SNC starting off and the head in SNC, their pay is minuscule in comparison. So if if you look at that, I think the American sports are far and far well are far ahead of the game in terms of their thinking and thought process in terms of where they can, they place strength and conditioning in the hierarchy of priorities, but in compared to the UK. So you can argue yes in those terms, but I think cricket has got a long way to go, but at the same time, it's very young in its infancy, I think, in terms of where it is going to go. So I think it's an exciting time for it to happen. But like I said, I think there's a, long, a lot of learning to be done and the same maybe growing pains that baseball had in the United States over the last 30 years. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because again, they place a huge emphasis on strength and conditioning in uh, in, in baseball as well. Obviously, people like uh, Eric Cressy is a very prominent trainer in the world of uh, baseball. We're big fans of Eric Cressy's work. So if you don't follow Eric Cressy, start following Eric Cressy. Um, cool. So how would you then, could you define what is strength and conditioning, obviously specifically in the context of cricket um, a little bit more? Succinct. Yeah, sure. I think I'm going to, I'm going to read this out because I've, I've, there's a blog that goes, like like most of our podcasts, there's a blog that goes with it. So you can go to the blog and to search. If you search, search what is strength and conditioning in cricket and find the blog. But the way I've defined it on here, I think, is the best way. So without cheating too much, strength and conditioning training in cricket is a systematic approach to enhance the athletic performance of cricketers. That's the way we've defined it, right? Now, when I hear strength and conditioning, there's so much emphasis placed on the strength side of things, not so much on the conditioning side of things, right? Or sometimes they can go more conditioning than strength, but it's a balance. It's a, it's a harmony you have to have in both. But it's beyond the weight room. You know, it's all about creating a rehab plan for, for athletes. It's all about improving their mobility. I would argue you can talk about nutrition and strength and conditioning plans for cricketers at the same time. So it encompasses a multi-dimensional approach to being a healthy, athletic human being that's good enough to perform for cricket. I think that's a simple way we can explain it in layman speak without going too technical and without going too far off on a tangent that we ain't going to come back. But it's essentially fitness, nutrition, strength training, rehab, nutrition, everything all rolled into one under this title in this bracket of strength and conditioning for sports. Exactly. You got to look. Every sport is um, has its sports specifics. I think I don't know what it was, and I, I, I say we don't want to insult any coaches out there. But we were watching someone, a cricketer, train doing really, really like heavy back squats, weren't we? Um, and you know, it's like how strong is strong enough? We're not. I'm not saying back squats are like the enemy or anything like that. You want to get strong. That's the strength part, of strength and conditioning. But you've also got to be specific to your sport, right? Because 
doing heavy back squats probably more beneficial for for rugby players, especially prop forwards, stuff like that. But for cricketers, body composition is very different. The game is very different. So you've got to be careful, right? Exactly what your choice of exercise is as well. Yeah, in, indeed. I think you said you said it best before before we went on air. There was a quote that Mike Boyle, one of our, another one of our heroes and mentors in terms of in terms of strength and conditioning in, in that field. He said, what, what, was, what was the quote you said? Uh, so this is a quote from Mark, Marco Cardinale, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, who used to be the head of sports science and research for the British Olympic Association. And his quote was, your sport isn't different, you just think it is. Um, so basically he's saying that, you know, everyone should pretty much do the same strength and conditioning routine, push, pull, squat, hinge, loaded carries, core, you know, agility, all that maybe 20% should be specific to your sport or Mike Boyle's argument is 10% should be specific to your sport, but everything else is pretty much the same, but everyone wants a sport specific program, but there is that small percentage, which does need to be sport specific. Like, like I've just used that example. You don't for cricket, you need to be strong, but how strong is strong enough for rugby? Yeah. Do heavy back squats. Cause you need to be ridiculously strong, especially if you're, you know, a prop forward. So there is that specific element, but 80, 90% of your training is going to be the same as everybody else. And I, I think what I'm seeing in South Wales, as an example, is I'm seeing a lot of strength and conditioning coaches that go to university and they're heavily influenced by the data and rugby. Okay. And they bring a lot of that into the world of cricket and it doesn't necessarily make them better cricketers. Not saying that their protocols are wrong and what they're learning and what they're teaching is wrong. It's right. But there's some things where you learn through experience and over time that you take these certain things away. So the ideal ideal well, being with cricketers, they want to score more runs, take more wickets. Let's take a fast bowler, for example. They always obviously want to bowl faster because the faster you bowl, the harder it is to play, essentially. So what we're seeing is in some strength and conditioning fields that their training is detrimental to the speed of the bowlers. They're making them slower because of the type of training that it does. And that's where sports specific comes in. But... We're all talking the same language where we need to have a strong core. We need to have the basic levels of strength. Can they do a push-up? Can they, can they hold a plank for two minutes? All these little things. So this is what we call GPP, general uh, physical prepara- uh, preparedness. I think that's the, that's the Russian term. I think is the best way to put it. But we've got to think of these, these terms here. It's like strength and conditioning is a basis. And then we go into sports specific for cricket after that, which involves a lot of power work. A lot, of, a lot of medicine ball throws, little slam balls, you know, rotational work because you've got to hit harder, bowl faster, all these types of things. But that's built on the foundation of good, solid, general strength and conditioning programming. So what would be some specifics then if we're talking, yeah, let's, let's go bowlers to start with and then we'll come on to uh, batsmen in terms, obviously you've got your, I say you've got your strength training, what would be the 10 or 20% specifics for, for batsmen? Uh, bowlers. Did I say bowlers or batsmen? I'm getting confused. Which, 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 which one I say? Bowlers. bowlers. We you said bowlers. With bowlers. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, if we're working specifically towards fast bowlers, well, the first thing with fast bowlers is their run up. That's the first thing. That's the biggest mistake I see in terms of coaching in general is that they haven't got a good run up. They're not efficient. They're not fluid. They're not running in like a sprinter, right? But gracefully enough. So, the first thing you do with them is you do a whole load of hurdle work and a whole load of sprint mechanic drills with them and keep making them do it day in, day out, time and time again. So that's the first thing I do. A lot of things, other, other thing with fast bowlers is a lot of them struggle, struggle with body comp. Some of the best fast bowlers in the world are lean, super lean, right? I mean, we get that whip it like action, be like a little whip it running in and then bowling at the same sort of speed. You've got to be most of the time, because there are exceptions to this, you want to be lean and athletic. So a lot of them have body composition issues. So those are two specific bowl things to see time and time again. And then we're looking at things that people may not even consider is we're looking at their pelvis. We're looking at the state of their core in conjunction with their hamstrings. Because most people, we call it what we call an active straight leg raise. Most bowlers can't touch their toes efficiently. And they also can't raise one leg in, in um you know, while, while using the other one as well to, to above a certain level because the hamstring come in to turn, turn on, which means their core isn't working and they can't rotate enough. Extending one hip while flexing the other, essentially. Exactly. That's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. 
Exactly. So those those are little things with fast bowlers. So it's there is a multifaceted approach to this. It's not just strength. It's not just conditioning. A lot of people just focus on strength, but there's more to be done with conditioning as well. But then overall arching theme is how do you support the cricketer to become the healthiest, most robust, resilient cricketer who performs at his best and recovers faster each and every time. So that's a, a roundabout kind of say to, to well discussion of what is strength and conditioning for cricket. Now in terms of who is this for? It's for everybody, like young, old, you know, pros alike. You know, everyone should be looking to adopt some kind of strength and conditioning into their routine, not just for the game of cricket, but to make them healthier, happier, you know, live longer human beings, live longer, prosper. Star Trek 101, right? So we want to make sure everyone lives longer and prosper and keeps playing for as long as they can. So by doing that, by incorporating a good strength and conditioning program alongside your cricket game, will help you play longer, play better, but also hopefully live longer too. As you say, live long and prosper. I feel that's a beautiful place to leave it. Thank you very much. Uh, That is it for today. Please don't forget to rate, review and subscribe. And if you would like our free training plan, then go to cricketmatters.com forward slash train.